through the line. Alyssa Brett had something to say there, which I was she was the one who stopped to say something there. Oh. <laughs> Let's watch that again. So the arm was already extended from what I could see. So it couldn't have been that bad. Um, There's got to be another camera in that building. Oh, is she? It was, okay. Yeah, it was after the game, though. So there's probably usually not people watching from that... Um, from cameras at that sort of thing because nobody's watching anyways they did, the bowling green state university police department issued a press release confirming that shoots a fifth year player so she's you know hanging around was charged after the unwarranted physical incident um after their victory and there she is being held by you know multiple women there who are on the team uh, like work for the team Unwarranted physical incident after the WNIT home game. Bowling Green State University Police Department has charged a member of the women's basketball team with assault. Eric, do you think this is necessary? Um, basically, the question I'd like to pose here is, do you charge a person with this when it's after the handshake? Because they said because it happened after the game, it is no longer part of the game and therefore is a civil disorder you know, situation. Um. I think so. Only because it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways. If those roles were reversed, that the white girl would certainly be facing charges. She would be kicked out of school. She would be lambast. She, I mean, she wouldn't be able to get a judge. She'd have to flee the country. <laughs> so, so yeah. And, uh, I was, the reason I read the article, uh, yesterday or maybe Friday, I forget. Um, is because I thought they were going to give a little background to it, like, oh, there was a hard foul in the third quarter, or, oh, wait, NCAA, I think they only played two halves, huh? Anyways, Correct. Um, <laughs> uh, there was a hard foul, or they were going to, like, give a little bit of, they were going to try to justify it, basically, and I was going to maybe sort of understand what brought that on, but you didn't get any of that. And I, I looked for it, I read a couple articles, and they don't, there's not, no, there's not even, from what I could find, and I didn't, I will admit I didn't do a crazy deep dive. I just looked at a couple articles hoping to find like, well, in the, you know, 10th minute of the second half, uh, the, the other girl tripped her or, so, or like something that would have would have maybe given us a little bit of reason for this. But I couldn't find it. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. But I guess my point is, unfortunately, we are at it. We are at a point in time where you have to punish this. Otherwise, I mean, look, we already know. That if you play if you play ball with the establishment, if you parrot the narrative, to, uh, you know the talking points, you can do anything. I mean, you could literally burn, loot, you know, a Foot Locker. You can go smash and grab at the Gucci store. You could do anything. But if you if you make a point against, you know, if you stand up to one of their agendas, one of their talking points, then they will get you. So uh, it sounds terrible, but it's just like you can't let this you can't let this continue. Otherwise, it will. And, and we both know who's going to get away with it and who's going to be, uh, you know, burnt at the stake, as it were. And look, that white girl wouldn't, she wouldn't, she would, she would have to, she could get, here's what happens. <laughs> they, they poke the bear over and over and over and over again. So that girl would have to take a hundred hits before it would be acceptable for her to swing back. So yes, they need to, they need to punish that girl so she knows she can't get away with this. And like I said, if if it were the if the roles were reversed, that woman would be in court right now. It would be an international incident for sure in the news about, you know, racism, of course. I hear what you're saying, and of course that much I believe to be true. In a perfect world, in a vacuum, I think no. Um, I'm reminded, I'm forced to be reminded of hockey, of course, due to being in Canada. And um way back in the day, there's this giant guy named Zdeno Chara. He's Slovakian he's six foot nine and he pushed a guy into the boards where the bench meets the glass so there's a court obviously the bench doesn't have glass in front of it because they got to jump over there and everything bench meets the glass and there's this big pole there it's padded guy gets pushed into it uh gets knocked out French people in Quebec uh because it's a Montreal Canadiens versus Boston Bruins game huge rivalry French people call the police this happens during the game French people call the police eh, they Call the police. He hurt our guy. Eh? Um, <laughs> no charges are laid. It's just, you know, a rough hit that puts a person in hospital. 
However, different things happened for different players, and I think that's the the line I'd go with. There, there's a threshold. There's a time where somebody swung a stick at a guy's head and knocked him out, and then there's a time where somebody grabbed a guy by the back of the neck and shoved him into the ice and broke his neck. Uh, nobody died in these situations, but careers were ruined. Now, the guy who got the stick to the head was a known scumbag in the lead, but he was also hit by a scumbag, so there's that. And the second guy who broke the guy's neck, you could see on his face for the rest of his career that he was broken by it. Um, so I think there should be a threshold. If this if this is in a normal situation where we're not in this political climate and um, we can just judge things for how they are and how they happen, I don't think this is worthy of anything other than maybe like a one game suspension because it's in the tournament. You know, you can't be punching people after the game suspender for the next game well, I, she lost they lost so lost. so we'll then give her five <laughs> games of next season but then and guess, she's in her fifth year already yeah, so, so it's, like... <laughs> it's hard to punish her i guess maybe this is the only thing left but like i don't know you got to figure out a way to punish her in some way but maybe this is why she did because she knows she's never coming back but i think she would have to do something worse than that like beat on her a bit more a hand wash to the face as it were i don't know how close <laughs> i can get <laughs> is not worthy of uh, a cr- fit a literal crime in my opinion because how many sports like basketball nba hockey football tons of stuff happens after the final whistle goes off and there's never any criminal charges about yeah, it but do you think okay she's charged with assault right mm-hmm. but do you think do you think for one split second that she's going to, I mean, there's not going to be any real consequence. It's going to be a little pain in the ass for a couple of weeks. She's going to have to go to court or something. And then what's going to happen? They're going to say, oh, um, you know, do a do two hours. Of, nothing's going to happen to her. Nothing right? may Even, happen, but do you really just want something on your criminal record like that? And w- there's, an, I just don't see, like, look. I'm not saying they should throw the book at her and put her in jail, but it's like even with these charges that they that they have quote unquote brought against her, she's not gonna. There's no. There's not gonna be any real consequence. We've already been through it. She's a fifth year. They lost the game. This is the end of the. Like she can't. A one game suspension isn't gonna do. It. I don't know how long are you even allowed to play? Can she just keep failing and play six seven years in the women's NCAA? <laughs> I mean, there's there's I don't no. Know. Maybe she's on her way to the dub. You know. Yeah, she's probably not. And look. As bad as this sounds, she she's gonna be more she she's gonna probably write a book or have a podcast or something like she's gonna be more popular than she ever could have been on her basketball skills alone. That's a fact. Same thing with Brittany Griner. Nobody nobody was talking about Brittany Griner. We were making fun of her for not being able to dunk before she got stuck True. in a Russian prison. And she comes back and now she's a hero. So yeah, you might have had a rough couple of months, but nobody was talking about you. Now they all are, and you can, you you have you should be thanking your lucky stars that you got that notoriety that you wouldn't have had. I mean, we saw, we all saw the clip. I don't know if you want to bring it up just for humor's sake of her trying to dunk during an ESPN uh, softball interview. Like, no, no, not in a game, not in practice, just her like, you know, on the court with one reporter and she can't look. I think Brittany Griner, I don't know how I got off track a little bit here. My point is these people are not going to face any consequences, and she is now going to be more famous than she ever could be based on her basketball skills. Well, yeah, maybe that's why she did it too, Eric. Maybe she's like, my career's over here. I got to make a name for myself. I would respect that more, you know? Maybe <laughs> she maybe she should have came out with something. Like, maybe she should have, you know, used some sort of branded blunt object. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, a Powerade bottle or something, or like, uh, body she armor. Go the uh, Tanya Harding route, like glue crowbar. And... That's too far. <laughs> okay. How did Tanya Harding lift the crowbar? They're heavy. How did she? Sw- Those are no. She didn't do it. With- oh, right. It was the masked person. Simpsons did this. 